Greetings to all my young scientists out there, and welcome to the very first episode of The Scientific Adventures of Nucleus Neo. Hello everyone, I'm Nucleus Neo, and let me start off by saying thank you for joining me on this adventure as we dive into the interesting world of science. Now in this channel, we're going to be covering certain topics such as chemistry, biology, and even physics. And my main goal for this channel is to introduce the basic fundamentals of these sciences to those that are in elementary, middle, and even high school. So if you dream of becoming a scientist or someone in the medical field, such as a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a veterinarian, it's very important that you understand the basics of these sciences as you progress throughout your studies. Now today we're going to be going over one of my favorite sciences, and that is chemistry. The reason why I love chemistry so much is because you have so many really cool experiments. You have experiments such as elephant toothpaste making crystallized rock candy, baking soda volcanoes, and even soda geysers. Now, for those that are new to chemistry, chemistry, in short, is the study of matter, its properties, and how and why atoms come together or separate to make different types of matter. Now, matter being a very important term, because matter is any substance that takes up space and has mass. And the really cool thing about matter is, is that it is all around us. This table that I have my things on is a form of matter because it takes up space and has mass. The air that we breathe is a, is a form of matter because it takes up space and has mass. And even the water that we drink is a form of matter because it takes up space and has mass. But what is matter made of? I mean, take this table, for example. I, I can see it. I can touch it. I know it's a form of matter because it takes up space and has mass. But what is matter made of? Now, the three states of matter that you're going to learn in your science classes are solids, liquids, and gases. And a great example that I can use to break down all three is let's look at water. Now, water is the only substance that we can see go through each state. Now, water in its solid form is ice. Water in its liquid form is well, water. And water in its gas form is steam. In each of these states, solids, liquids, and gases are made up of subatomic particles called Now, the one thing that always interests me about atoms is the theory behind it. The idea that everything around us are made up of these subatomic particles called atoms. Now, the first people to theorize that atoms existed were by two Greek philosophers, Leucippus and Democritus. And they theorized that all matter around us are made up of atoms that are too small to be seen. Now, let's look at water again. You can see the liquid form of water, but what you won't be able to see is actually what makes up water. You won't be able to see these H2O elements. You won't be able to see the oxygen or the two hydrogen. Now, Democritus theorized that if you were to take something and cut it in half again and again, you would reach a point where it is uncuttable. Now, we're going to go ahead and run an example. So, if you have a piece of paper, let's go ahead and take a piece of paper out, fold it in half, and tear it in half. Now, take one, take that half, fold it in half, and tear it in half again. Take that half, fold it in half, and tear it in half again, so on and so forth you will eventually reach a point where that paper is unterrible. And these unterrible or uncuttable particles, Democritus called atoms. Atoms meaning indivisible. Now he also theorized that everything around us could be explained if we could understand how atoms work. Now Leucippus and Democritus' theory was later proven to be true when scientists John Dalton and Albert Einstein were able to prove with evidence and math that atoms, in fact, did exist. Now, thanks to these two scientists and other scientists such as J.J. Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, Erwin Schrodinger, Niels Bohr, and James Chadwick, each of these scientists were able to contribute their scientific discovery to the atomic theory which we know and we are studying today. Well, now that we have that brief history lesson out of the way, we can finally get into some fun stuff, and that is what are atoms made of? Now take a look at this structure here. I'm sure you've seen this structure before in comic books, or movies, TV shows, video games, in your science class, and even in your science books. But what this model structure is, is Ernest Rutherford's atomic model structure. And what this model structure shows us is that one, an atom is mostly empty space. Two, the electrons orbit the nucleus, kind of like how planets orbit the sun. And three, the nucleus is positively charged. Now, on a side note, as you progress in your studies or progress in your science classes, you are going to learn that this particular model structure is not an accurate representation of what an atom is. Now, I'm not going to dig too much into that because that goes beyond the basis of what I'm teaching, so I am going to stick with this particular model structure. 
Why? Because this is something common that you're going to see in your science books. Now, what are atoms made of? An atom is made up of three subatomic particles, which are your protons, neutrons, and electrons. And now that we're on the term subatomic, I did jump the gun early with this term, so I did want to make a correction, so I didn't want to confuse anybody. When I was explaining the three states of matter, which are your solids, liquids, and gases, and I said that they are made up of subatomic particles called atoms, I jumped the gun with the term subatomic. Now, the states of matter are made up of atoms, but atoms are made up of subatomic particles called their protons, neutrons, and electrons. So I did want to make that correction for you. Now, now let's take a look at the nucleus, which is in the center of the atom. Now, the nucleus are made up of protons and neutrons, and they're held together by a strong nuclear force. Now, I went ahead and color-coded this for you, so you know, you'll know exactly which ball is which. Now, the red ones are your protons, and your royal blue are your neutrons. Now, let's take a look at the protons. The characteristics of a proton has a positive charge, or you might see in a book either a plus or a plus one. And a fun fact about a proton is that the number of protons that an atom has will determine which element we are looking at on the periodic table. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and dig too much into that, but I am going to make another video discussing elements on the periodic table. Now, let's look, take a look at the neutron, which is your dark blue. Now, in short, the neutron, there is no charge. So if you want to throw a number on it, you can just put zero, but a neutron has no charge. And now let's take a look at the electron, which are your black balls. Now your electron, the characteristics of an electron is that it has a negative charge. It's located outside of the nucleus, as stated before, as it orbits the nucleus. And a fun fact about the electron is that out of all three of the subatomic particles, it is the smallest, meaning its mass. It weighs less than a proton and neutron. Okay, so I went ahead and talked about what chemistry is what matter is, and I broke down the parts of an atom. Now it's time for me to pick your brain in what I like to call fun time. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask a series of questions just to test and make sure that you were paying attention and to also reinforce the information as well. So I'm, as I'm asking the questions, if you need a little time to answer these questions, just pause the video and then when you're ready, unpause and continue on, okay? Let's go. Question number one, what subatomic particles make up that? Is it A? protons, B, protons and electrons, C, protons and neutrons, D, protons, neutrons, and electrons. If you chose D, protons, neutrons, and electrons, you are correct. Question number two, what subatomic particles make up the nucleus of the atom? Is it A, protons and electrons, B, electrons and neutrons, C, protons and neutrons, the D, protons and protons. If you chose C, protons and neutrons, you are correct. And question number three, what subatomic particle is the smallest? Is it A, neutron, B, protons, or C, electrons? If you chose C, electrons, you are correct. And the final question, what subatomic particle has a positive charge? Is it A, proton, B, neutron, or C, electron. If you chose A, proton, you are correct. All right, everyone, that's the end of the show. For all my young scientists out there that stay to the end, thank you, and you are amazing. So stay tuned because the next video that I am going to put out, I am going to continue my discussion of the atom with my goal of ending at the periodic table. So until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay scientific, and I'll see you next time.